Clarence Burton was born in 1852 and died in 1933. And while attending uh, a class, he was inspired by a lecturer who said that every man should have an avocation. And Burton's chosen avocation was to collect uh, documents and books on American history every day of his life. The deed to Belle Isle. Deed to Belle Isle, right here. This is it. <laughs> the whole island. This is, this is the deed. About two years ago, uh, I got a phone call from a lady who had was offering some scrapbooks, May 31st, 1957, at Olympia, with two of Elvis's favorite things, women and law enforcement. <laughs> Tyrus R. Cobb. I'm familiar with that name. It says baseball player. But then she gets into the point of writing the letter, which is she wants Abraham Lincoln to be president. But she sees his picture and she thinks his face is too thin and that he would look better and, and f would fill out his face if he grew a beard. And she advises him that all the women like whiskers and that they would tease their husbands to vote for the candidate with whiskers because at this time women can't vote. The Voice of the Fugitive is a Canadian publication, um, abolitionist newspaper. And the publisher was Henry Bibb, born in 1850 in Kentucky. Uh, as a slave. When he got to Detroit, he was able to uh, get at one of the Underground Railroad stops, one of the main ones, which was Second Baptist Church here in okay. Detroit. He eventually um, went to Canada and uh, started this Voice of the Fugitive. In 1915, the collection opened for public use, and so we're celebrating our 100th anniversary this year. It took about four or five years for the main library building on Woodward Avenue to be completed, and that was completed in 1921, and that's when the collection moved uh, to the building. Actually, we're in this building right now. So for the first four or five years, uh, you actually went to Mr. Burton's house where library staff would help you. What he did was he sold the house and he took the entire proceeds and uh, gave it to the library to establish an endowment for the collection, the Burton Endowment. And that uh, remains today and that's what allows us to continue to purchase materials.